Welcome once again to yet another episode of Autocar India Quick News. As always, we have lined up some of the latest developments in the automotive world for you. So buckle up and enjoy the ride. We start with news from Hyundai. After releasing numerous teasers over the past few weeks, Hyundai has given us our first good look at the upcoming subcompact SUV, the Exter. The model will be the smallest SUV in Hyundai's lineup and will sit below the venue. The Hyundai Exter will be positioned as a rival to the Tata Punch and Citroen C3. In look, the Exter sports a boxy design and upright stance. Details of note include a split headlamp setup, a four silver skid plate and flared wheel arches with thick cladding across the length. A diamond cut alloy wheels, roof rails and dual tone paint can also be seen. While real styling hasn't been revealed as yet, Hyundai has announced some other key details. The Exter will be offered with a 1.2 litre petrol engine with manual and AMD gearbox options and there will be a CNG version on offer as well. There'll be five variants for the petrol versions while the CNG will be offered in two variants. Bookings for the Extra are open for a token amount of 11,000 rupees and official prices are expected to be released in July or early August this year. We are expecting to hear a lot more about the Extra in the coming days, so make sure that you are subscribed to the Autoga India channel and that the bell icon is active so you will not miss any of our updates. Over the week, Hyundai also announced standardizing three-point seat belts for all seats and four airbags across its model lineup. Volume models like the i20, Creta, Venue, Grand Iton Neos and the Aura have been updated over the past few months with added safety features, with the all-new Verna offered with six airbags as standard from launch itself. Kia has launched a new special variant for the Sonnet called the Aurox Edition. This new variant will be based on the HTX trim. It will be offered with a 1.0-litre turbo petrol or a 1.5-litre turbo diesel engine. Much like the Sonnet Anniversary Edition, the Aurox Edition only gets some cosmetic changes, such as a beefier front skid plate and tangerine accents on the front bumper, grille, door sills, rear skid plates and center wheel caps. The Aurox Edition Sonnet will be offered in four color options, which, if we exclude the fancy terms, are grey, black, silver and white, all of which complement the accents rather well. Aside from those changes, the Aurox trim doesn't bring anything more to the table in terms of features or powertrain. It comes with all the standard features the HTX trim offers, Prices for the Kia Sonnet Aurox Edition ranges from 11.85 lakh rupees for the 1 litre turbo petrol engine with a manual transmission to 13.45 lakh rupees for the 1.5 turbo diesel engine with an automatic transmission. The turbo petrol variant produces 120 horsepower and 172 newton meters, whereas the turbo diesel produces 116 horsepower and 250 newton meters of peak torque. Sticking with the Korean brand, Kia will also be updating its Seltos SUV by July this year. The update will bring a refreshed look thanks to a redesigned grille, new headlamps and LED DRLs. A new design for the alloy wheels and LED light bars at the back are other changes expected on the model. On the inside, the facelift will also get a 10.25 inch display, one for the instrument cluster and one for the infotainment system as well as a rotary drive selector instead of the conventional lever for the automatic variants. The updated cell doors will also see the long-awaited inclusion of a panoramic sunroof. The updated cell doors will also get a key upgrade with ADAS or Advanced Driver Assistance Systems. Likely to be camera and radar based, the ADAS suite will bring features like automatic emergency braking, lane cape assist, cross traffic alert and more. The 1.5 petrol and the 1.5 turbo diesel engines are unlikely to see any changes, though the cell doors will get a new turbo petrol engine. The Hyundai Group's new 160 horsepower, 253 Nm 1.5-litre unit will take the place of the older 140 horsepower 1.4-litre turbo petrol unit. BMW has launched the X3 M40i in India for an ex-showroom price of 86.5 lakh rupees. This performance-oriented SUV will be available in limited numbers. The talking point of the X3 M40i is its 3-litre 6-cylinder turbocharged petrol engine that produces a strong 360 horsepower and 500 Nm. The engine comes paired to an 8-speed gearbox that allows the launch control enabled 0 to 100 time of 4.9 seconds. Top speed is limited to 250 km an hour. The engine is complemented by an adaptive suspension, variable sports steering, differential with performance control and M Sport brakes. For the exterior, the X3 M40i comes with the M Sport package as standard. This includes M-specific kidney grills, headlights, wing mirrors and tailpipes as well as dual-tone 20-inch alloy wheels. The window surrounds, roof rails and slats on the grille are finished in black along with red-painted brake calipers. The X3 M40i gets an all-black treatment on the inside along with the M Sport package that includes M color stitching on the steering wheel and an M badge at the bottom, M specific seat belts as well as an M badge on the center console. Sources have confirmed that the much awaited launch of the Maruti Suzuki Jimny has been pushed to June from May when it was originally scheduled to have launched. The five-door SUV made its global debut at Auto Expo 2023 in January and has since got over 24,500 bookings so far. 
Interestingly, our sources have confirmed that there will be a waiting period for the Jimny from day one. There's a six month wait for the manual variants, whereas the automatic variants would only be delivered eight months after booking. We will be driving the Jimny in the coming few days, so please stay tuned to the Autokai India channel for the full review. And do let us know how much you think the Jimny should be priced at. Škoda is looking to bring the Super back on sale in India. The model, along with the Octavia, was discontinued in April with the implementation of the latest BS6 Phase 2 norms. Peter Salk, who heads Škoda in India, said that the brand is looking for options to bring both the current gen as well as the soon to be launched fourth gen Superb to India. Speaking on the possibility of a strong hybrid, Salk said that it would be one part of the solution, but Škoda has a strong focus on the EV market and is planning to test that first. He also went on to say that the brand also has plans on bringing the Octavia and even the Octavia VRS back. But for now, the Superb is on top of the list. What do you think about Škoda's plan on bringing the Superb back, even if it is an EV? Let us know in the comments. MG Motors India has confirmed plans on opening a second plant in Halon. This move is part of MG Motors 3.0 plan, which will call for an investment of 5,000 crore rupees. The company is in talk with multiple entities, including individuals, corporates, and financial institutions, for potential investments. CEO Emeritus of MG Motor India, Rajiv Chaba, has said that they aim to Indianize the board, management, shareholding, and supply chain in the next two to four years. MG Motors India will bring in four to five new vehicles, which will largely be EVs, to produce them in this new plant. EVs will be at the core of MG Motors India plans. It will start assembly of batteries for its EVs in 2024, and it is also exploring possibilities for cell manufacturing in the country with an alliance partner. Over on the world of two-wheelers, Autogar India and Vida, Hero Motocorp's electric two-wheeler arm, have together set a new Guinness World Record. Six riders, three from Autocar and three from Hero Motocorp, rode together into the history books to set a new record for the greatest distance on an electric scooter in 24 hours by a team in relay. The team of six, who rode in turns, managed to break the previous record of 1,430 kilometers that was set by a European company in October 2022 by covering 1,780 kilometers around Hero's high-speed test track in Jaipur using the Vida V1 Pro electric scooter in under 24 hours. The highlight of this achievement was that this feat was achieved using an Indian electric scooter on Indian soil. The full video of the record will be up on our channel soon, so make sure that you are subscribed to our channel and the bell icon is active. We have learned that the Bajaj Avenger 220 Street is all set to make a comeback in India. The 220 Street will employ the same engine that powers the Avenger 220 Cruise, which is an air or oil cooled 220cc single cylinder engine that makes 19 horsepower and 17.55 Nm and is mated to a 5 speed gearbox. Much like other Avengers, it will get a telescopic fork and twin shock observer suspension setup. Braking duties will quite likely be handled by a disc at the front and drum at the rear, much like the 220 Cruise. Compared to the 220 Cruise, the 220 Street will feature more black dot bodywork, alloy wheels, and misses out on the backrest and large front windscreen. The styling of the upcoming 220 Street will be more in line with the Avenger 160 Street. As for the price, the Avenger 220 Cruise is currently priced at 1,38,368 rupees, and we expect the 220 Street to be priced slightly lower. TVS Racing and edutainment theme park Kidzania have partnered to open a new racing experience center for children between the age of 5 and 16 years at Kidzania in our city mall, Mumbai. A long list of activities that include assembling the body panels of a TVS Apache RR310 on a stripped-down bike, a design studio that allows one to virtually create a motorcycle design, and a racing simulator provides a platform for children to interactively learn about motorcycles. There's even a dedicated track for kids to ride a mini electric bike outside the experience center. Lastly, there's TVS branded merchandise at the Riding Gear store, with gloves, jackets and ISI marked helmets available for purchase for kids as well. And with that, we conclude this week's news. Thank you all for watching and see you all next week.